I finally got to try out Dirac Live. This is something that I have wanted to do for a long time. Now, to give you a little bit of background, I am in the process of building out my tiny home theater. And if you haven't seen my build videos that have gone through every step of this process, definitely go back and check those out. Uh, there will be a link, hit this card up here. It'll take you to the very first build video for this tiny theater. So check those out and then come back to this video. So if you have watched those videos, then you know that I have here the Onkyo TXRZ50, which is a uh, 11 channel processor from Onkyo. It does nine channels of amplification, 11 channels of processing. But what's interesting about this receiver is that it has Dirac Live loaded on it, fresh out of the box. Now, the reason why that is important is because Dirac Live is available on some other receivers, but it's an added upgrade that you have to pay for. Dirac Live comes preloaded on the Onkyo TXRZ50. Now, the caveat is that it comes with Dirac Live, but it does not come with Dirac Live base control. That is an added upgrade that you do have to pay extra for. I think it's $200, maybe $300, I'm not sure. But the, it, is, it is a not insignificant cost to add base control to the uh, RZ50. So I did not do the, the added base control. So I did just the Dirac Live room correction software. Now, the reason why I wanted to do Dirac Live room correction, try it out, see how I like it, is because I have previously used Odyssey on both Denon and Marantz uh, processors and um, AVRs. And I have also used Arc Genesis, the Anthem room correction software that is on like the AVM90, the AVM70, which the AVM70, that's what I have in my basement theater. So I've used those. I've also actually done a little bit with uh, YPOW, the Yamaha room correction. Wasn't super impressed with that. Um, I've also done the Onkyo proprietary Accu EX or something. It's like the Accu correction. Also not super impressed with that. Um, so <laughs> went way too long to explain all this, but just to give you a little bit of background to where the perspective that I'm coming from when I got into Dirac Live now. So there are some things that I liked, some things that I didn't really like. Uh, and then also in the uh, process of running the uh, the calibration, like the, the sound gathering with the microphone, I, I made an interesting observation uh, that is not related to the uh, room correction, uh, but I'll, I'll get into that uh, a little bit on la later on. Uh, so let's start off with the things that I like with Dirac Live. So I like how it is um, fairly straightforward and flexible to, to run. I, I like how they give you like a diagram. Well, they give you a few options kind of at a high level to choose from. Is it just a single sitting position or do you have like a couch where you could kind of move from seat to seat? Like, is it is there kind of a range of seats that you could be sitting in or is it more a general space? So so from that, it gives you uh, uh, once you make that selection from there, then you can dial down and you can do just the uh, the points that they give you. So I selected because this is only a two chair theater uh, and 99% of the time it's going to be just a single person listening and watching. I did just a single position here. Uh, and so the, the software uh, came, I wouldn't say preloaded, but it, it came pre-configured to do nine points. You do a, a sound uh, I don't know what the what the word for it is, where you set the microphone and it runs the sweeps through every speaker and you do that at the main listening position and then you move it, you know, like 15, 20 inches away to a specific point. You do the sound sweeps again, you move it to a different position. So the positions for a single sitting position is nine. You have the main listening position and then there are four points, kind of a square forward of your ears and then four points 
kind of behind your ears. So I, I did like that. I did like how the, it gave you kind of uh, uh, a easy to follow way of determining which which uh, sound format to to use. Um, I haven't tried any of the other uh, configurations so far. I've only done just that one. Now it does if you if you want to gather more points than just nine, it actually gives you the option to add additional points, and you can place them wherever you want, and then you gather, you know, the sound. You do the sound sweeps. So that so that was cool. I like that. Um, I also like how easy it was to add the you know quote unquote house curve. So if you're not familiar with that, um, our ears, if if the frequency response is just flat across all frequencies, our ears don't really like that. It doesn't really sound natural. So you kind of want the, the lower frequencies to be boosted a little bit and then to kind of tail off a little bit on the on the higher frequencies. So uh, Direct Live made it super easy to do that. You just you know, from each of the speaker sets, whether it be the mains or the center or the sides, surrounds, heights, you just select each one of them and then you can boost the lower frequencies uh, very easily. You just drag it up and it's super easy. Uh, so I, I liked that. Um, now it gave you the option to roll off the higher frequencies. So conventional wisdom says not to do any uh, room correction beyond 500 hertz. So basically just do it from like 20 Hertz or 10 Hertz up to 500 Hertz, and then just let the, the frequencies be as they are uh, beyond 500 Hertz. And so what you do is you drag, it's called a curtain. You just drag it over so that uh, it stops at the 500 Hertz mark, and then it doesn't do any correction beyond that, which means that if you set it to tail off on those higher frequencies, since you're not doing any room correction on those, I'm, I think it's not actually doing that roll off on the higher frequencies. That would be something interesting to ask somebody who's more knowledgeable about direct than me. Um, because those higher frequencies, I definitely like to have that roll off because my ears are kind of sensitive to the, to those higher frequencies. I think some, some people refer to them as bright. Like they say speakers are bright if, if those higher frequencies are elevated. So I prefer them to be rolled off, but I'm kind of getting ahead of myself because I, after running the room correction, I actually like the way it sounds. I really, really like the way it sounds. Um, and even without that roll off on the 20 Hertz. So those are some of the things that I, I really like. And the big one is I really like how it improved the sound. Now, when you run those sound sweeps, on every single speaker, it shows you what the frequency response is on each of those speakers. And on those lower frequencies, I would say, you know, below 500 Hertz, I was getting some massive uh, peaks, elevated, uh, there, you know, elevated sounds, elevated uh, volumes on certain frequencies beyond, be, uh, lower than, than the 500 Hertz. And so when I saw that happening, when I saw those results, uh, I thought, okay, uh, that's good because it's very easy for room correction software to dial those frequencies back so that they're not elevated. It's much more difficult to correct nulls where you have like a dip in the frequency. Those are, are, are more difficult to correct. So it's, it should be pretty easy for it to dial those frequencies back. And so what I was listening for is to see with the with the Dirac Live room correction turned on, if those frequencies were uh, elevated like they are in the room naturally, or if the room correction software actually corrected them, and I am happy to report that uh, first I I ran it I I, I did the uh, a few demos with the room correction turned off. And it sounded bloated, like the sound kind of sounded bloated and I wouldn't say muffled, but definitely kind of just bloated is probably the best word I can come up with. And then when I switched over to the room correction software mode, then everything sounded more balanced, cleaner, tighter, more clear. 
And so I'm really, really happy with what the room correction software has done here in this room by correcting those frequencies. And I was also happy because the when it because it does a full sweep up to 20,000 hertz, right? And so I didn't really have any major peaks or nulls be beyond that 500 hertz. And so there wasn't really anything that needed to be corrected in those higher frequencies. It was only the sub 500 uh, frequencies. And so I'm happy with how it turned out. So what did I not like about Direct Live? Uh, well, first of all, <laughs> and and most of these, there's, there's most of them are not specific to Dirac Live. It's more the Onkyo Dirac Live combination. Um, but there are a few uh, that are specific to Dirac Live. So we'll start with this one. Um, in order to run the room correction software, you have a couple different options. The most straightforward option is to plug the included mic into the front of your receiver and then run it from there over, over the on-screen display. That's the most straightforward way to do it. I did not want to do that because the mic that is included with the receiver, it is of a lower quality. And so I already have the U-Mic 1, and so I opted to do that, which means I plug the microphone directly into my laptop, and then I download the Dirac Live software onto my laptop, and then I run it from there. And then the laptop, connects to, talks to the receiver over my home network. And here's where I get into a little bit of a, a weird thing. Um, I had the receiver plugged directly into my network. I pr always prefer a wired connection whenever possible. Now the laptop, it's connected over Wi-Fi. And in that configuration, the, the, the Dirac Live software was having difficulty seeing the, the receiver. It just wouldn't connect to it. So I had the thought, well, what if I connect the receiver to the Wi-Fi instead of wired? It, it shouldn't make a difference. It should not make a difference. But I just decided to try it. And sure enough, once I did that, then it had no trouble connecting it to it. So um, I think that's an issue with the receiver. It should, my because none of my other devices have any trouble connecting, you know, one being wired, one being wireless, and they talk to each other just fine. It's just this receiver. Um, so that was one thing. Another thing that I didn't really like was that Dirac Live has you manually set the volume for like the sound sweeps, I guess. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what's happening there. You, you On that initial screen, you have to set the calibrated volume level which every other room correction software I've ever run has always just played the sounds automatically at the volume that the software wants to run them at. And so because of that, I had to manually set the volume and, I, and it was kind of a trial and error because the first time I did it, it wasn't set loud enough. And so it said, oh, your room's too loud. It's not working. I'm like, well, the room's totally silent. So I guess I have to boost the volume a little bit more. So I had to crank up the volume a little bit. So kind of trial and error uh, to get that figured out. Another thing that I wasn't thrilled about was how long it takes. <laughs> so so the sound sweeps, that was basically um, identical time-wise to all the other room correction software I've ever run. Um, it plays the tones through the speakers and then it calculates it. What did take a long time was once I did all of the sound sweeps for all of the speakers, then you have to uh, set the filter levels, like the that house curve that I was talking about. And once that's all done, then you export it to the receiver. And it was the exporting to the receiver that took so long. And it pops up a screen and it says, this can take a very long time, please be patient. And I'm glad that it had that warning because Yes, it did take a long time. I mean, I'm talking like 20, 30 minutes. Now, part of that could be limitations of my laptop. It's possible that it's doing calculations. It's having to calculate all of those corrections. And so that is maybe what is taking so long. I don't know, but I do know that I've done the same thing with my using that same laptop running Arc Genesis on my AVM 70. And it only takes a minute, maybe two. 
So this was like at least 10 to three, 10 to 15 times longer than, than Arc Genesis. So that was something that I wasn't really thrilled about, but it's not a deal breaker because hopefully you're not having to run the room correction software frequently. So I mentioned earlier something, an observation that I made that I thought was very interesting, not related to room correction, but as I was doing the sound sweeps, I was kind of sitting back behind the chairs here uh, so that I wouldn't affect the sound. Uh, and it was very interesting when the sweeps would run through the height speakers, they were very distinctly playing through the, the correct speakers. But what I noticed was my ears didn't localize the sound as well as I would have thought they would have. And it's not an issue with the speakers because I got up and I listened. Like I put my ear up in the speakers. Um, I did another sweep just to, just to check. So here's my observation. I think we as humans don't localize sounds above us as well as we think we do. And it makes me wonder if maybe some of the complaints about Atmos not being as effective or as jaw dropping as people want to or hope that it will be. I wonder if it's a limitation of our ears and the way we hear sounds and the way we localize sounds. I don't know. It's just a thought I had. It was kind of interesting. I'm like, ah, maybe, maybe we just don't hear as well as we think we do. I don't know. But all that said, once I got everything plugged in, everything I got uploaded and configured and, and calibrated, how did it sound? It sounds amazing. It does sound incredible. I obviously did some of the, the uh, standard demo scenes. Obviously, I did Ready Player One, the race scene, because I am super familiar with that, and I know how it is supposed to sound, and it sounded incredible. And I was able to localize sounds behind me, um, sounds above me. It, it sounded incredible. And again, I noticed a, a stark difference between the the sound without the room correction without direct live and with direct live big difference big improvement so yes i am very happy with uh direct live i am happy that i now have it as an option to mess around with and fool around with and i'm looking forward to getting in there and and doing some more tweaking and adjusting because i know that i have barely even scratched the surface so it was cool it was awesome thanks for watching